Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Mohawk Motors. My name is Jason. So I've got a project today. The other day I went and picked up a new trailer. I decided it was finally time to upgrade to something a little more appropriate and heavier duty for what I use it for. Not to mention, I know we're gonna have stuff in the future that I'm definitely gonna need a bigger trailer. So I bit the bullet and went and picked this one up. It's 20 feet long, eight feet wide, and has 14,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating. Now to make this uh, better suited for my purposes and what I plan to do with it, which is gonna be picking up and hauling parts donor vehicles and occasional projects of my own, I need to get a winch on this thing. A lot of times the parts donors I get have a bad transmission, or flat tires, or you know they're buried back in the weeds somewhere, won't run for whatever reason. So I have to have a winch to get these things on and off of the trailer. And I decided I might as well upgrade a little bit over my old winch. Since I have a heavier duty trailer, I should have a heavier duty winch. So I went to one of my favorite places on earth, Harbor Freight Tools. I picked up a 12,000 pound winch. I decided to treat myself and get a wireless winch remote so I won't have to be getting in and out, in and out, tethered by that 12 foot, 12 foot winch cable anymore and a universal mounting plate. So I'm gonna try to get this winch mounted right here at the front of the trailer. And then if I can find a battery that will work, I wanna hide my battery inside of this, uh, they call it a, a chain tray. But if I could tuck it back under here, that would be ideal. So first things first, let's get this stuff unboxed, unpackaged, and start getting it mounted onto the trailer itself. Remote switch control. I believe it's as simple as plugging this little receiver into the receptacle on the winch. And then powering up the remote here. Oh, that's a heavy boy. So, I want to get this mount as close to centered as possible. Isn't that handy? I was hoping they would have a little support underneath the boards, they don't. Now I'm curious and wondering to myself, this thing should be pulling this direction most of the time, 95 to 100% of the time. It's gonna be pulling that way. Now, if I mount this like so, and just bolt through the deck boards, hypothetically I should have enough strength from shear that it shouldn't be an issue. Let's get the fair leaf bolted on the front of this thing and then I'll see, uh, I'll get it measured to make sure it's centered and then I'll figure out which mounting holes I'm gonna need. I'm gonna have to countersink into the deck boards just a little bit to clear the bolt heads for the winch mount. All right, everybody. So I've got this thing mocked where I wanna put it. So it'll sit right here tied up against the head panel. I've got my wires run. I wanna tuck all of the control box. There's just enough length that I can put it underneath of this panel in the little, uh, in the storage tray. So I'm gonna do that to keep it safe. My old trailer, that box got smashed up from stuff hitting it. I wanna avoid that this time. So I'm gonna tuck it down in the little storage bin here where nothing can get to it. I'm gonna have my battery down there also. Uh, because I have the wireless remote, it should be fine down there. It should be safe, protected, mostly out of the weather, and I won't have to worry about it getting smashed up or anything like that. So I have to run to get bolts to bolt it down and try to find a battery that will fit in the little storage compartment down here 
It's gonna have to be an odd size battery. I, I only have five inches of vertical height to use and I really do wanna get the battery in that space. So I have to see uh, what I can find that will fit. And then when I get back, we'll finish getting this thing all, all installed. I'm gonna get my holes drilled in my two front head rails here first to get those mounted. And then I'll get the poles drilled through the deck. framework I absolutely agree I wish that there was steel framework under these deck boards that I could get bolted to but there isn't and if I'm being honest with you 99% of the torque this thing is going to be exerting is going to be pulling it straight back so these five bolts will be in shear and these two bolts will be in tension and I really think I think those seven bolts are going to be more than enough to hold this thing still for the work I'm doing. Like I said, the, the hardest work it ever has to do is dragging a truck with flat tires up onto this trailer. I really don't think I'm going to have any issues. If I ever do, then I'll have to re-engineer. But I really don't want to do any welding or cutting or anything on this nice brand new trailer if I can avoid it especially into the framework and mess up the nice black powder coat. I'm uh, hoping that powder coat will keep this thing looking good for years and years. So I want to try not to mess it up. Okay, the next thing I have to work on is the wiring and electrical. Now, like I said, on my old trailer, my little control box got hit and got busted up. So I do not want to mount it on top of the spool here uh, like the instructions suggest and like you usually see done and there's just enough wire on here That it will reach down into this storage box So I need to cut a small hole Probably do a small oblong hole right here in the lid of the storage box to run my wires through and that'll keep my control box down out of the way and essentially prevent it from getting smashed. I'm gonna keep my battery down in here also. The wireless remote control just plugs into this connector. So it'll all be safe and sound, out of sight, hopefully never get damaged. Guys, I want this to be nice, but by no means am I a perfectionist. I just got this one from Harbor Freight the other day. Let's see how it cuts. Well, 
Uh, the camera battery died while I was getting the winch all wired up, but I've got a temporary battery in there for testing purposes, and I'm going to try it out and see if it works with my wireless winch control here. <laughs> well, it works. I have to charge the battery some. But it works! Alright, everybody. It's actually about a week later. Uh, took a little three-day getaway to recover and relax a little bit. I've got my battery for the winch. Now, I don't know what this battery is originally intended for. We found it looking through the catalog at Napa. It's the size and dimensions that I need to be able to put it where I want in the trailer. And it's a, it's a, a uh, submerged glass mat style battery. Basically that means it can be mounted in any position and it won't leak. It's not a lead acid battery. Now, the downside to this thing is it's got what I've learned are known as pencil style battery terminals. And they look like a top post like any other battery, but they're smaller diameter. So I had to do some research and I did some hunting online and I found these battery terminal adapters that are supposed to convert from a pencil style terminal, which my battery has, to an SAE style terminal, which everything else I'm using has. And they're basically just I mean, it's just a little lead shim. One goes over the positive. One goes over the negative. And give a little tap just to see them all going down. And then your terminals mount on top. Now I'm using a, these are marine style battery terminal adapters. So they adapt it from a top post SAE style to a bolt on style marine post. Now I'm doing this for two reasons. One, I'm making what I could get work. Two, I like the marine style connection especially because I'm going to have a wing nut on the negative terminal. So if I need to leave the trailer sitting for any extended period of time, I can disconnect the negative terminal and that should keep my battery from draining. So I'm going to get these terminals put on nice and snug. And then I'm going to get the battery itself mounted out in the trailer. Okay. So I got my positive and my negative attached. Now the battery is going to mount horizontally in the battery compartment. I'm going to cut myself a big piece of rubber to put underneath of it just so the sides of it don't rub through on the expanded steel flooring in that little toolbox compartment. And it'll give me a little bit more confidence knowing that my battery terminals aren't accidentally going to hit that expanded steel and cause a dead I'm short. Also, I went ahead, I got these lights. I honestly impulse bought them when I was at Harbor Freight. But sometimes I'm loading up at night and man, having 2000 lumen spotlights that I can aim around and help me see what I'm doing when loading and even just checking out whatever vehicle it is would be massively helpful. So I want to get these mounted on the trailer also. Like I said, those came from Harbor Freight. I found this super slick light wiring kit harness, light wiring harness on Amazon for like $14. Includes all the wiring, the relay, a switch. It's even got a built-in fuse and your little, uh, little pigtail ends to connect to your lights with weather pack connectors. So it's all sealed up tight uh, for a killer deal. So I'm gonna get these put together and figure out where I'm gonna mount these on the trailer also. Uh, I'll bring you guys, ha, huh, no way, wow. The Harbor Freight lights literally come with the same wire connector. Yes! Isn't that cool? 
All right, I'm gonna get this all figured out and then get it over to the truck or trailer, figure out where I'm gonna mount them exactly and get that done. All right, everybody, I've got it all done. Let me show you. I've got my winch mounted on the winch plate here. I got my two lights installed. All of my wiring is run neat and tidy. I've got my battery, my winch control, all of my wiring for my lights, everything all tucked up in here behind the two by four. I use the two by four because it's also an insulator. My battery terminals are right here so I can access them, but I don't want my chains to slide against there and cause a short or worse. So the two by four insulates the battery terminals and also keeps the chains and binders up here where I want them. Got my light switch here, turns them on, turns them off. My wireless remote for my winch is right here. I really love this thing. Guys, I feel like this wireless remote, wireless winching capability is, it's gonna be a game changer for me. But right, piece of cake, out, in, beautiful, works flawlessly. I've got everything wired as well, so my winch battery, charges when connected to the truck just like the breakaway battery does now if you don't know how to wire your winch battery or breakaway battery to charge from the vehicle while driving i'll leave that in the comments below and i'll post up a video and show you guys how to do it but i really really recommend that when you have something running off an independent battery on your trailer because that way you know you're not going to show up somewhere with a dead battery It'll be charging the entire time you're driving. Now, the added so. benefit to the way I've done this and what I'm really excited about, <laughs> if I ever need to leave this trailer in an insecure location, uh, leave it in a parking lot or something like that, I can throw a padlock through this little eyelet here. And now all of my electronics, all of my switches, everything is locked up and inaccessible. So, I'm super, now. super excited. I can't wait to get the first, uh, get the first job that I need to use this thing, either picking something up or dropping something off. And I'll make sure I bring you along and show you how it goes. But until then, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And uh, I'm looking forward to using this trailer and showing you guys how well it works. Thanks again for watching. And until the next video, take care. All right, that's pretty bright. I'm not upset about that. I mean, that definitely give me enough light to see what I'm doing when I'm getting stuff strapped down. <laughs>